Hi, this is Cole Theth, and this is my submission for the Phase 3 assessment. What we're looking at here is a sample TPAC lesson plan for a Biology 30 classroom. This particular lesson plan would cater to a unit of the nervous and endocrine system in the Alberta Program of Studies, and there is a sub, or there's an outcome underneath this unit where you or students must address, analyze experimental evidence regarding the influence of anesthetics, drugs, chemicals, natural and synthetic, on the functioning of nervous system and relate that to addiction theories. So you can see in the title, Diagnosing Drugs, Evaluating Symptoms, and Communicating Findings to Society about Drug Usage as well as Addiction. That's what this lesson plan will be catering to. I'm going to skip ahead for down this here and we're going to look at what exactly we're doing in the lesson and we'll come back up. So. To tee up this lesson in the introduction and engagement, students are going to be asked to visit this website. This website contains games that help students, or where students act as a consult to a doctor, a future doctor, where they are helping to diagnose patients who have succumbed to certain symptoms. So there's a certain subset of these symptoms or games where students or the patient has succumb to drugs and is exhibiting symptoms of drugs. So what I, I would assign teams of three or four an individual case study on this website. They would play through that. Should take about 20 to 25 minutes in my trials. And once they've done that and figured out what drug is causing the symptoms, helping the doctor solve the case or what have you, they're going to report to me what drug was doing this. Once they report the drug, that's where this assignment will begin for them, the, the formal assignment. So what I'm going to ask them to do in, throughout the span of about two days is they're going to create some form of way of representing their findings about what the drug their patient had been using was doing. I want them to relate that to the drug, the impacts the drug has on physiology, nervous and endocrine systems. I want them to talk about the historic, this historic and legality issues of this drug in Canadian society, whether or not this drug is considered addictive, and talk about some preventative measures to counteract this drug's usage in society. So as you've noticed, this is not very structured. That's done on purpose. So I'm giving students choice with, for any mode of presentation of how they want to convey their findings and their report. One condition is that it uses some form of technology so that it can be put in the classroom wiki. So I've, I've laid in some suggestions here in the lesson plan on what they could be doing. So they could be doing, they could write a medical case study, not an extended one, but one that includes figures and a little bit about the drug and its in, impact on the body. They could create a poster advocating against it and cautioning about some of the things that it has in society, possibly film a commercial, about the dangers of this drug, record themselves as an expert panel on say like a show like The Doctors discussing the drug in society. They could even make a PowerPoint or a Prezi. And really if they have anything else that they want to use, they can come to me and convey what they would do. And as long as it's approved by me, go ahead. You have carte blanche. So for the assessment of this, this is not going to be a major, major project in the scope of the course, but I, I want them to do a good job. So it'll be out of 20, and provided you cover all or you answer all five points of these criteria listed above right here, and they're accurate and applicable, you should be able to get 10 out of 10, no problem. And then the overall visual or written quality of the work will be out of five, and then since we're doing it in a team-based approach of three or four, I want each partner to do a peer assessment of each other, that's out of three, and if you, if you put it into the classroom wiki on time, that's an easy two out of two. So we're going to move back up to the top of this lesson. So we've discussed, I've touched on a little bit of the, the outcomes in the Alberta Program of Studies right here. It also lends itself nicely to the ICT, where you're supposed to process and retell information you discover, and use technology to support present conclusions. We are going to be looking for a lot of informal assessment where I am walking around and giving students constructive feedback. There is a formal assessment uh, at the end with the assessment criteria listed below and formative. So it's not, 
it's not a it's not a unit final it's not a major major project so it's more of a formative assignment so all that is explained down here as far as the pedagogy goes uh, myself as a teacher I have to I'm self-selecting groups so that they are all equitable so the, so most for the most part I would expect that the submission quality should be very similar I have to foster an environment where teamwork and communication is paramount and I just kind of have to generally monitor the progress and what kind of project product is being produced throughout the class time so looking down here technologies for learners being used so for sure they're gonna need a computer or a tablet they might want I don't know, possibly cell phones video cameras audio recorders they could do something on a smart board a lot of that's in the hands of what however they decide to convey what they're finding for me I need to maintain the classroom wiki page and have a computer for grading and doing the assignments so what are some of the 21st century skills that these students are using? So critical thinking, they have, to, they have to get through the online game. They have to critically think what is going on here. And they have to think critically about the legal and moral concerns this drug might have in society, as well as the addiction and preventative measures against it. Creating, they have to create some kind of a electronic template where they can display their findings. Communicating, similar thing. They have to tell us why it's addictive, why it's dangerous, how does it affect the physiology, the endocrine, the nervous system, etc. And collaborating, they're in a group of three or four, they need to have fully participate to get their full peer assessment grade. So an essential word, addiction, they should know that. Epidemiology would be the prevalence of disease or addiction in this case for patients in, in the literature or online. Materials, they're going to need a laptop, they're going to need a ta or a tablet, and they're probably going to want something with a video slash audio recorder. But that's, again, back to whatever they choose. So we touched on the introduction, we touched on the lesson. We'll go down here. So modifications and enrichment to this lesson, I can't answer that just yet. I haven't taught the lesson. So after the lesson, I would come back and complete both of these boxes. This right here is the continuum of the eight pedagogy concerns in the article we were asked before con or constructing this lesson plan. So I've just kind of rejigged this and typed it out onto the preview app. It makes my life a little easier. So I would I would mark this lesson as leaning more student centered, as students have a lot lot more choice and it's not necessarily me directing, I'm more of a facilitator. It's I have it slightly to the divergent learning because while they're still learning about addictions and they're still learning about physiology, the endocrine system, the nervous system, their choice or their, whatever drug they end up getting is slightly divergent so they're going to learn in different ways in their sub-team groups. I have this leaning very, fair, fairly far to the few prior experiences because this doesn't seem to be an activity that would be happening a fair bit and you don't really have much of a prior knowledge or emphasis on drug abuse in any of the classes in my opinion. This is more of a deep comprehension in my opinion because you're actively engaging with this material, you're making it authentic and you're recreating it and presenting it to a public audience so you will take more pride in it thus it will make your knowledge more deeper on this issue. It's a two-day lesson plan so it's leaning towards a shorter duration plan that's where I have it here Definitely less structured because I've given them a very small amount of criteria that I want, and I've let I've kind of let the, I'm going to let their creativity foster whatever they produce. Small group of three or four, and I have it to get a good grade. You should be having you're going to be needing to consult multiple additional resources to answer all these questions. You can't you won't be able to find these all on just one resource, and you are also producing it on a different resource, so you're looking at multiple additional resources required. Down here, sorry, I'm just going to slide this up. So, talking about the affordances and constraints through the lens of UDL in this lesson plan. So, an affordance to this would be that I have selected the groups prior to the class. By doing such, I am I'm performing peers as a, peers are acting as a scaffold because 
it's by design that I have them in an equitable state, which makes them, it makes it an affordance of this lesson plan. Uh, diversity of these groups is also an asset. Some students may have, may have a passion for this assignment, some may not, some may have, may be tech savvy, some may not, so hopefully by me choosing these groups, there, there'll be a nice balance that I've chosen. It also forces these students to collaborate and work together using technology which is relevant to a 21st century learner. Some of the constraints. If a student misses this class, it's going to be very difficult for them to make it up. Almost impossible, I would suspect. Uh, students may have issues working with partners that were not self-selected. And if the assignment is not completed during class time, that would mean that it would have to be completed at home or outside of the class, meaning what, or the groups would have to convene after class hours and one of them would have to have the technology or they would have to remain at school so that they could complete the assignment and submit it to the classroom wiki on time. So that is my first additional analysis. Sorry, one second. Sorry about that, that was painful. So, we're looking at the learning theories here. First one we've learned about in class, behaviorism. So, behaviorism is more, work, more looking at an input-output with the black box of learning. This doesn't really cater to that. There's not really any input output causation for this activity. There might be a little bit in the online activity where they're helping to diagnose the patient, but outside of that, it's not a major theme in the lesson. Cognitism is a, is a fairly major theme in the lesson. Uh, scaffolding through the peer, uh, peer selection, the ability to display knowledge in a prezi per se or a poster, chunking knowledge, and etc. Constructivism, I would argue, is the prevailing uh, learning theory in this lesson plan because you are using problem-based and project-based learning. You are the teacher, myself, is a facilitator of the knowledge, not an active stand and deliver method. And it's an authentic learning because Addiction and drug use is pertinent in all of our lives to some extent, I would suspect. There's also a connectivist issue here where I'm asking these students, I'm not providing them with much as in the way of resources. They're going to start with a drug and they need to find the resources on their own. So they have to evaluate how to get it, where to get it, what is reliable, and that is fundamental in the learning theory of connectivism. So, say I was going to adapt this to a virtual lesson plan. I, I feel that this would, would cater nicely to it. You might lose the group work component of it, but the rest of the lesson plan should stand on its own. So, to adapt it, as an, to, adapt it to a virtual lesson plan, I would start by... First thing is that the site where we play the game is free and we have no issues there. So it should, it's easily accessible, so I would just post the link on the website or on the class website with instructions to pick one of the drug-related activities. Once they had finished that, they would report to me or they would just go from that point on what the drug was and they would start the assignment. So since you're doing it individually, you don't have your peer support, so you would get an extended deadline in mind. So, and the, so, and the way in which the assessment would work would be slightly different because there wouldn't be a peer assessment or there wouldn't be. So instead of being out of 20, it might be out of 17. We would see. I think that's mostly what I have to say on this matter. So some of the things that I didn't talk about was the terms of use and digital citizenship. Uh, it, it wasn't included because for the most part, we're not really using anything that needs to be, we don't need to be sensitive to copyright in this respect because we're creating original content. 
digital citizenship hopefully is something that we've addressed before and we're actually being good digital citizens through making a, P this is basically a PSA again, or advocating about addiction as well as drug use. Didn't really talk about the maker movement in this lesson plan either because we're not necessarily, I guess we could be designing some form of technology to convey our lesson here, but I feel like it caters more to less, more traditional with respect to technology ways of delivering the content and showing our work. We haven't really talked about the emerging trend or any emerging trends within the horizon report. Possibly this is this falls within this report, but I felt that I felt more strongly about the three that I had already talked about where I had the most to say. So this would be the summer or the conclusion of this lesson plan. Uh, thank you for listening and have a good day.